Blockchain is one of the best industries for developers to start their careers in 2022. It's one of the highest paying fields in tech because demand for blockchain developers is off the charts. And if you're trying to break into this industry, whether you're an experienced developer already or just started from scratch, then a winning portfolio can be make or break in your success. In this video, I'm going to give you some of the top tips to optimize a winning portfolio for blockchain developers. I'm going to talk about this as a blockchain developer myself who's broken into the industry and has helped thousands of other people do the same. So if you're new around here, hey, I'm Gregory, and on this channel, I turn you into a blockchain master. So if that's something that you're interested in, then smash that like button down below for the YouTube algorithm and subscribe to this channel. And if you want to know how to become a blockchain master, step-by-step, start to finish, create a winning portfolio, land your first job, then head on over to adaptuniversity.com forward slash bootcamp to get started today. All right, so let's look at some of these top tips for creating a winning blockchain developer portfolio. So a quick recap on what a portfolio is and why it's important. You know, if you're trying to get in the industry, whether you're a developer already or you're just starting from scratch, you know, ultimately someone's going to need to know what you can do if you've never had a blockchain developer job before. It's the old adage of like, you need an experience to get a job. Well, how do you get, you know, a job without experience? Well, you get that experience outside the workplace and then you prove that to other people. And that's exactly what your portfolio does. And one of the reasons I'm making this video is because I looked at some portfolios recently that people asked me to critique and I gave them some feedback to implement. I'm going to summarize some of that in this video and also give you a lot more amazing tips. And also a quick clarification, what I mean by portfolio is really twofold. You need projects that you have built and put out there in the wild that other people can see. That's the code, that's the actual apps themselves. And the other part of this is a marketing website that shows off those projects and also tells people more about you and what you can do. So let's go ahead and dive in and look at some examples. So here's an example of what I would consider a minimum viable portfolio site that has everything that you need, that really has no frills and gets straight to the point that shows people who you are and what you can do. Okay, so I'm actually gonna put a link to this down in the description below. This will be a free portfolio template that you can grab if you want to. And then I've got another example pulled up here uh, which is a, a lot more eye-catching, okay? So you can definitely go the extra mile and do this type of thing as well. But let's look at the common elements between these two things that really make them work and how you can optimize your own portfolio to increase your odds of success. So the first thing is really just understanding the functions that your portfolio is supposed to serve. Like, what's it supposed to do? Well, the biggest thing is that it's supposed to essentially pre-qualify you for some sort of conversation or interview. So your portfolio needs to give people a sense of who you are, like they actually want to talk to you. It's kind of like a pre-interview. You definitely want to have a good first impression. So, you know, having some sort of friendly, personable headshot is a good start. You can see an example of that here. You can see an example of that here as well. But also just maintaining a good communication style throughout your portfolio. Okay, we'll talk about that in the About Me section here a little bit more in a minute. And one way you can really go the extra mile with this is to create some sort of video on your portfolio site that actually, you know, gives people an idea of what it's like to talk to you and to communicate with you. If somebody's, you know, felt like they've had a conversation with you over video, and that's going to go a long way before you have that first introductory conversation to potentially hire you. All right, so the next thing are definitely your projects inside your portfolio itself. So you can see uh, whatever your portfolio website is, you know, whether it's, it's just a simple one like this or a, a more eye-catching one like this, you definitely need to have your project as one of the first things that they see when they look at your website. Okay, that's, that's key because really it's all about what you can do. That's the most important thing as a developer. So... When you get to that project section, you know, you should be able to have a preview of your project here where they kind of get a sense of what it is. All right. And it's just a really two second description of, you know, what it is, maybe two sentences. And then they need to be able to click through to it. They need to have a link where they can actually uh, see it deployed live to the web. And if it's, you know, it's a blockchain project that requires them to connect their wallet, they need to be able to connect their wallet and then actually start using it. Okay, that's a big deal. All right, the other thing is they need to be able to see the code. Now, not everybody's going to care about this, like if you're just initially working with a recruiter or something, but at some point, you know, you're probably going to be in front of a technical person that wants to look at the code. So they need to be able to click through to that on GitHub. All right, and that should link to a repository for the code that they can see that you actually wrote it. And then that should be, you know, on your developer profile. So they're going to click through to that probably and, and make sure your GitHub looks good whenever they see that too, because they're probably going to want to see multiple projects on there, you know, green commit history and all that type of stuff. Now let's talk about the actual projects themselves. So some people ask me, like, how many portfolio projects do I need? I mean, the minimum is one. All right. If you're going to do that, really focus on it and make sure that it's good. But let's talk about what are some of the portfolio ideas. Well, you really want to make sure, I mean, I mean, the best case, the best thing here is that they are something that's actually useful in blockchain. So like something that uses cryptocurrencies like, uh, you know, ERC-20 tokens or NFTs with non-fungible tokens with the ERC-721 standard or similar, okay, where it's a real world use case, 
because they want to see like, do you understand crypto? That's the best thing, okay? It's if you create like a decentralized cryptocurrency exchange or some sort of NFT marketplace or something like that. Those are some of the two most popular portfolio ideas that show that you understand the technology itself. And then you can also code both the smart contracts and also the front end so they can use it. All right, next, let's talk about the about me section, because at some point on here, again, you're going to want to have some sort of just elevator pitch that tells them who you are, what you can do, why it's important. Okay. So, you know, a lot of people overthink this. And one of the worst things you can possibly do here is put some massive wall of text that somebody feels like they have to, you know, carve out time to read the whole stuff. It should be pretty short and straightforward and to the point. And the whole idea here is trying to communicate who you are and what your value proposition is. Okay. So, I mean, bonus points here, like I said before, if you can put a video in this section, because that can help people see not just like who you are, but you get a sense of what it's like to talk to you, which is going to really help pre-qualify you for that initial hiring conversation, okay? So if you don't do that and you're just doing text, okay, let's talk about some uh, potential things you can do to optimize this. So you want to kind of treat your portfolio website like your own sort of private LinkedIn page that you own that's deployed live to the web. And so you can take tips from other sites that teach you how to optimize your LinkedIn profile like this, you know, how to write a powerful LinkedIn summary. You can kind of teach, teach this section like a LinkedIn summary that talks about, you know, the keywords that you want to put inside of there, like the fact that you're a Solidity developer if you're developing Solidity smart contracts. You know, you want to list any hard technical skills that you have, like React JS any programming languages, all that type of stuff. You can recap some of the projects that you've built and what your background is, but you can follow all these types of things. You want to have some sort of hook that hooks the reader in, okay? Be conversational, be concise, write in the first person, use the right keywords, focus on your strengths. And really short, sweet to the point is really big here because really it's supposed to pitch yourself. It's not to give your entire life story because ultimately that's going to come in hiring conversations. So you can see an example of this. Uh, this is an example from just a software engineer post, of course, it's not a blockchain developer. But you can see this, basically, this is really short, sweet, to the point. So it's like detail-oriented, responsible, and committed engineer will get it done on time and high-quality product spirit and more than a decade of experience defining requirements, design, implementing, testing, and delivering complex backend and web applications using a variety of programming languages and technologies. Technical proficiencies include, lists all the technical proficiencies here, database servers, tools, methodologies, certificates. It's so straightforward to the point. I think this is a great example that you could essentially modify and customize for your own portfolio. All right, so the next item you can include on your portfolio site is your experience, okay? So this can be your education. It can be any past work experience, okay? So what I would say here is only really include relevant stuff. I mean, if you if you have any type of university education, even if it's not, you know, web or blockchain related, okay, you can still put that because, you know, you know, having some college degree uh, it really probably isn't going to hurt you. I'll put it that way. But in terms of your actual work experience, if you have all this work experience that, you know, isn't really relevant, then it's not always worth including. Okay. Now there is a benefit to showing them that you have actually had a job before, but just try to, you know, use your discretion on what you're actually going to include here. In many cases, you don't need to put like everything. So next are your social media links. Okay. You can see examples of this right here. So, I mean, at a very minimum, you definitely need your GitHub profile. That's, that is a social media network, okay? You want to be able to link to your GitHub profile so you can see that you actually have projects out there. But other stuff that's super helpful, of course, LinkedIn is I always recommend using LinkedIn as an extra resource when you're trying to get a job so you can include LinkedIn on there. But some other stuff, you know, like your Twitter account or any other social media account where you might have posted uh, development-related stuff. I always recommend that people start sharing information on their social media accounts that talk about what they're working on. And if they can click through that and see that you've been doing that, that's definitely a bonus. And the other part of your social media is just your actual presence. Because again, like I was talking about, you know, potentially creating a video here that just talks about who you are and what you're trying to accomplish. That kind of helps, you know, pre-screen you before they talk to you. Similarly, if you have a compelling social media presence, okay, that's going to give them an idea of, you know, how you present yourself online, which can be a big factor in, you know, deciding whether they want to talk to you or not. All right, now the last thing you absolutely have to have in your portfolio is a way to contact you, okay? So at a bare minimum, that needs to be an email address. You can see that's down here in the socials uh, section, okay? You can also see examples of that down here. But one other thing I would say about your contact method is I would put it at the very top of your page too as one of the main call to actions. Because if you're, if you're designing a website with a goal, the goal is for them to contact you to initiate a hiring conversation. And you want the goal to be very clear and very easy for the user to take that action. So, you know, having that contact button at the very top is pretty critical. And we've got that on 
uh, you know, both of these examples here. Okay. So you can customize this HTML button to actually open up a mail client to trigger a new email for you. That's one of the most common ways to do this. It's the mail to attribute for that HTML tag and just have that go straight to your email address with, you know, a preloaded subject that's like, hey, you know, would love to chat about your portfolio. All right, so those are all the essential elements that you need inside your portfolio. So let's talk about ordering. Again, you know, the most important stuff at the top, the first thing they see is like just who you are, uh, a title that describes what, you know, what you're aspiring to do, which is become a blockchain developer. You know, also don't put aspiring, just say that you are a blockchain developer. You can clarify all that like in your actual conversations, okay? But then having some sort of way to get in contact with you at the top is, is critical. Now, honestly, my favorite thing to do next is just put the projects because that's your hard you know, value. And they can see that initially followed by the about me, then the experience, and then maybe your socials, and then a final call to action to contact you at the bottom. Uh, that's pretty similar to this flow here. Um, the projects are actually second here. I would recommend moving those up to the top for most cases, unless you have a really, really compelling uh, bio here. That's the recommended order. And a couple of final notes that I'll kind of clarify here based on a lot of the frequently asked questions that I get about portfolio. One is like, does the theme really matter? Like I've showed you, this is sort of a minimum viable portfolio right here. And this is a much more, you know, fancy eye-catching portfolio. Um, so, I mean, the theme, it, it does matter. The question is always, how much does it matter? So there's kind of two schools of thought on this. Like, especially if you're working with recruiters or something, or your first, you know, impression is going to be with someone who's not super technical. Um, you know, people just in general are kind of superficial. And if you go the extra mile and make something that's eye catching, it's going to help. Like, it's not going to hurt, assuming that it actually does look nice. Okay. But, you know, if you do have something that's minimum viable like this, okay, it's still going to be way better than not having a portfolio. So I, I wouldn't really stress about it. But if you can, you know, go the extra mile and make something that looks really nice like this, then that's going to be a huge. Uh, bonus, especially if your first impression is with someone who's non-technical. But at the end of the day, I wouldn't be like overly perfectionistic about it, right? There's all this temptation of like, is my portfolio good enough? You know, do I need to sit here and tweak it for hours and hours before I just send it over to somebody? Like as long as you've got, you know, what I've talked about in this video, at least one really good project in here, and it is minimum viable, that's all you really need. And you don't really need to just like stress about it endlessly. The biggest thing is taking action and getting out there and those initial conversations are gonna be way more valuable than trying to optimize your portfolio for hours on end before you even start. All right, so the final thing is actually hosting your portfolio. So you definitely need to put it out there online. So where can you do that? And like, how can you get a custom domain? Does any of that stuff actually matter? Okay, so I, I, I'll just say this, as long as your portfolio is out there and you can just easily shoot a link to somebody, that's all that really matters. I mean, you can go the extra mile and like try to put it on like yourname.com, like, you know, your actual name.com and register a custom domain if that's even available. OK, you know, a lot of the domains aren't even available these days, but it's not really required. Like it, it, it's better. Right. But you don't have to have it sort of like having a, a really eye catching portfolio is better, but it's not necessarily going to be a deal breaker. So you could host it on a free service like Fleek. OK, I, I do lots of projects on Fleek because once you deploy it to your GitHub account, you can easily just push it to a Fleek website. You can even put on an IPFS if you want to, uh, to make it extra web 3.0, okay? And another popular option is just, you know, hosting it on GitHub pages. So you can set your portfolio up on GitHub pages and that can even have a big bonus tied to it because if it's hosted on GitHub pages and they can already see your GitHub URL, then they can just, you know, change the URL and look at your GitHub profile uh, and then it's attached to that account as well. It can also give you some extra, you know, commit uh, history on your map a uh, similar story, it is, even if you host it somewhere else, you can still, you know, post your portfolio, make frequent updates, and that'll help update your uh, commit map as well, even if you don't host it on GitHub pages, but that's another option. All right, so those are some of my top tips for optimizing your portfolio to get a blockchain developer job. So I hope you like this video. As always, smash that like button down below for the YouTube algorithm. Subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. That really helps these videos out so the more people can learn about blockchain. And if you like what you saw in this video and you want to, you know, take action on this right now, you know, build the projects for your portfolio, optimize your portfolio. I can show you how to do that. Lend your first blockchain job over at dappydiversity.com forward slash bootcamp. You don't have to be an expert to get started today. You know, I've helped people with zero coding experience become real world blockchain developers in a matter of months. So that's all I've got. And until next time, thanks for watching Dappy Diversity.